unless you're on your laptop. All right, hey, hey, hey everybody. We're back. Look who I'm with. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Cole. Thank you for being here. Do I need here. to look at your lapel? You do not I need to look at my lapel. You just need to look straight ahead. This is Cole Neesmith. Um, I love that. I want to ask you what, how it's capitalized differently, which we'll talk about in a minute. Oh, but I have no idea. Is, <laughs> uh, Susie, let us know you can hear us and see us. I appreciate you being on the show today. Um, I'm fascinated by what you do for our city. Um, and there's, yeah, you'll get to see the people that come on, right? I'm so you can read. Shalisa. Shalisa. I love Shalisa. Um, hey, Jen Waterman. She's awesome. Uh, so welcome, man. So they obviously can hear us and see us, so we don't have to worry about that. So welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Were you, uh, when I when I invited you, we were like, oh my God, Bogart, leave me alone. We did the flag committee together. What more can I possibly do? No, he was very oh, kind. Let's do it. Cole's very kind. So we thank did. You. We I met you because I think we had... I had met you or either gone to some of your events before, yeah. uh, but really we got to know each other, I think, because of the flag committee, yeah. which was one of the most amazing experiences for me. I thought it was fascinating, the whole process. Frustrating at some times, but that's because we're all, we all have an opinion. We do and then, And then when you're dealing with somebody incredibly artistic like Cole, he's got a whole nother frame of reference that when he brings it in, you're like, wow, maybe... <laughs> yeah, I'm wrong. So um, I do love that we had that process, and the yeah, mayor's office was amazing, and I thought our team was yeah, awesome. That's good. So welcome. Thank you so much. Good so to be here. I'm happy you're here. Give us a little bit of background on you. So we always joke that all of the R and D money that we have, meaning I don't read, uh, goes to the booze or the water that you might be drinking. So when I act surprised, I'm not really acting. I actually will be probably be the first time I hear what your background is. Uh, I'm an Orlando native. Uh, oh, see, after, I didn't know see, that. I know. Uh, after high school, moved to Nashville, lived there for a while, tried Atlanta for a little bit. Um, have worked with Shalisa, who's watching uh, for decades. She's doing amazing. entertainment with her and the and the parks and private events. And so I grew up as a musician. Uh, traveled full time with a band for a while. Uh, still work with Shalisa and her team. Great, great people. Uh, from time to time and love every minute of it. Uh, so I, I am a musician at heart. Uh, see, I didn't know that either. Grew up, yeah. Still and you're it. here. You're, you're Orla where did you, where'd you go to school? Where'd you go to high school? Junior uh, Boone. Oh, you went to Boone. Yeah. See, I went to Colonial yeah. back in the day, long before I'm you sorry. were born. I know, right? I actually got out of there. People are like, you went to Colonial? Boone actually has a great reputation, yeah, so it does you're good. Yeah. So music, though, were you always musically inclined, always yeah. artistically inclined? Yeah. From, uh, from, from being a kid, you know, um, sang in the church choir, like literally, and then, wow. uh, you know, learned to play guitar and have done a ton of acapella stuff. Uh, which I still do a lot of. Actually, the most recent thing that I did with uh, Shalisa and Entertainment Central was uh, Universal Studios. Uh, Mannheim Steamroller comes in every December, does a, a run of shows, and did that with them this year, which was super fun. That's so, so cool. Yeah. See, I did not know you sang. Oh. I just thought you were super artistic. I guess most people, I think, with the arts, you've got this hidden talent all over the place. So artistic yeah. people tend to have all sorts of talents that we don't see. Maybe you just focus on one, but you focus on all of them. Yeah. So you sang, Shalise is awesome. They they perform many times, and she and I are friends from college. I think she's a Zeta, I'm a Sigma Chi, um, maybe. Uh, but she's awesome, and her husband's awesome, and the group's amazing. Yeah. So I yeah, love yeah. them. Our kids all kind of grew up together at Lake Highland. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. so it's good stuff. Yeah. All right, so, but how did you go from music, and then what did you transition to? You said yeah, you so moved to Atlanta. Why Atlanta? Well, I was there for a, a, a matter of just months. I was testing it out. Testing I had a lot it of, out. just had a lot of friends there, and I thought, is this a place for me? Um, what when was, I was attractive in, to it? What was attractive? Like, well, it turns out not seat? much. I was going to say, <laughs> you didn't stay very long, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Move uh, on, really, Atlanta. Really, it was, it, was, uh, it was the people, the friends that I had there. Um, and, you know, it was in – I, I toured with a band for a while, and – um, really just came to the point in the process of that of recognizing how much I do love community of how much I love rootedness and um, so you know it brought me back to Orlando really intentionally because I, I have and had at the time as, as well a ton of really wonderful relationships people I love family and friends and uh, that was really important to me so one of the things I love about Orlando is how much white space there is on the canvas of who we are and who I we're becoming. I agree with you. And, uh, I've just been uh, given the opportunity to help shape a little bit of that, which I'm really grateful for. When you started, did you feel like, and you, you do so much, and I want to talk about Creative City Project, but you do so much here, but there was a time when we weren't as cohesive and collaborative mm -hmm. as we are now. I feel like we are definitely a city of collaboration, 
definitely a city that, that is working together for the common good, mostly. Um, and I'm not just wide-eyed or doe-eyed about it. I really do believe that. So when you first started and came back and said, you know, I want, I want to be part of the community. I love being here. What were your first things that you wanted to do? What were some of the things that you saw as um, projects we needed or things that were needed in the city? Yeah, I mean, I think it was me just doing my stuff as a musician. So I had a band and um, would play it social a lot and was part of the music scene and uh, continued to grow just kind of in the artistic things that I was doing. So produced a show with the Fringe Festival for the first time in 2012 and have been part of several uh, shows that have been part of that since. And just kind of continued to expand my relationships with other artists and people who um, help lead our arts community. And I think over time have continued to, to just grow in how much I love the artists of our city, how much I want to platform them, how much... Uh, opportunity there is uh, to collaborate with our arts organizations. I think we have an incredibly collaborative arts community, which makes it possible to do a lot of really wonderful things. I agree. I think that we have this awesome, there are so many things that go on. Right before the show, we were talking, we were talking about, so what do we want to talk about on the show? I just feel like there are so many people who know about certain things but don't really understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a group of us that are super involved and kind of running into each other all the time. We go to the events, we see each other at events, but there's an entire community that I think could participate more. And we, we do, we try to get the word out there, but it, this, this one of the purposes of the show is to try to expose other people who might not be in that little circle, littler circle, um, to, to understand what's going on. So when you talk about the arts community, people probably don't even know what that means. Yeah, so of course. give them a little idea of what, what you see as the arts community here. Well, so we, um, as the Creative City Project, the organization I run, uh, one of our missions is to help cultivate a, cultivate a thriving arts community in Orlando. So one of the things that we started at the beginning of 2018 is a weekly segment called This Week in Art, where we highlight three to four really interesting arts events that are coming up in the next seven days. Cool. And one of the reasons we did that is because there is so much going on and so many people just don't know about the amazing things. Like, I would imagine that most of the people Back. Most of the people who watch this broadcast <laughs> don't know that this week was the Orlando Indie Comedy Festival. It started Thursday. It runs through Sunday. They are hosting 40 comedians who are coming in from out of town, and they're hosting dozens of local comedians. And I'm not really even connected with that scene. I, I don't no know idea. how big the scene is, but I know that there is a group of people who are working hard to develop Central Florida as a place where comedians can start, develop, and sustain their career. And I think it's really wonderful. That's and there are awesome. so many little subcultures of artists Agreed. and performers who are doing things like that. So what we want to do, one of our missions of the, as the Creative City Project, is to let people know about these little subcultures, to give them glimpses into them, to let them know what kind of programming they're producing, so that we, as citizens of Orlando, can go out and support it by attending. Correct. So tell us about Creative City Project. So you've given us a little bit about the mission. So. Really, there, there. It, he is so right. Cole's right. There are so many things going on. And back in the day, I'm going to date myself. We used to look, look at the calendar section in the Sentinel, and then you could kind of see all of the things. You go, God, this looks good, and then you never went to it. Uh, we don't have that anymore. You don't really have that touchy feely thing. So there has to be somebody who's the conduit for. Uh, disseminating all of that information, all of the cool stuff that's going on. So talk about how you came up with, how you all came up with Creative City Project. Um, and more about what it does. Yeah, so um, people know us mostly for the annual performing and interactive arts event that we produce in downtown Orlando. It's called Immerse. We started in 2014, and this past October, it's the third weekend of every October, this past October we had about 1,000 artists, an audience of about 25,000 people, uh, one Saturday in October. This year in 2018, our event will be two days, Friday and Saturday, October 19th and 20th, more than 1,000 artists, and we expect 40,000 people to join us in downtown Orlando for unique arts experiences that people can't have anywhere else. So things that we've done, we've you know, we've put uh, performers from Cirque du Soleil hanging from the ends of cranes while singers sing live from balconies. We'll partner with the Central Florida Community Arts Orchestra, put them on a series of five stages, a hundred piece orchestra that the audience can stand among the sections of the orchestra for an immersive orchestral experience. 
this past year, we built a 50-foot tall scaffolding tower and put 13 drummers from the Orlando Magic drum line uh, all over that tower and lit it up and they did a really high energy thing. So it's really super fun and, and that's what we specialize in is creating experiences that people literally can't have anywhere else. So even if you're a fan of the ballet and you go to every performance that they do, when they come into downtown Orlando and they're in the midst of high rises performing in their tutus, it's a totally <laughs> different experience than what you would see in their traditional performance venue. So we are so fortunate to have partnered this past year with about 115 arts organizations wow. to put on that event. And there's no way we could do what we do uh, without the collaboration of so many in our arts community, so many arts organizations, Orange County government, the Downtown Development Board, the City of Orlando, the Police Department, the Fire Department, and tons of really wonderful um, private corporations who help uh, help us put on what we do. And so it's been really amazing to see that grow. And then outside of that, you know, that's, that's two days a year. Right. So the other 363 <laughs> days a year, we devote our time and our energy to doing what we talked about before, which is platforming local artists and connecting the residents of Orlando and visitors to our town uh, with those artists and arts organizations by just keeping people informed with what's going on. So, plug, in the description of this video is it. a Here link to the Creative City Project. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on social media because every week we're letting you know about some of the most interesting things that are happening in Central Florida. I love Florida. that. So, people are, so where, did, where was the actual performance? It's down off of Orange, right? What, right, so two we... Two days, we'll talk about that first. We shut down... Uh, we shut down Orange Avenue, so Orange Avenue between Central and Jackson, and then Church Street and Pine Street. And then we use the business plazas along that route as well. I saw them setting up. I could not be there this year, but I saw them. I, I missed you all. I saw the video, a lot of videos. I saw a lot of Facebook Lives coming from that. People were just amazed by the performances. But you mentioned something earlier, and I've got to ask you, 100, like 150 organizations. I didn't even know there were more than 10, and I'm involved organizations in town. I think yeah. that's the other thing that people just don't know. And you were yeah. talking about subcultures yep. and subgroups. It's so important. They don't, and a lot of them don't know how to get their message out. So how awesome to have Creative City Project where they can use you as a conduit hmm. to get their message out. Yeah. And so do you work with, um, is there any particular arts that you work with kid-wise? Do you work with Deepak? Do you work with uh, community. I mean, is it everything? I, I'm just in my head. All I can think about is 150 places. Wow, I just didn't know we had it, and people are actually asking that. Like, yeah. right, well, who are, give us an example of who we might not know. Well, first of all, I would say again, go and click on that link to the Creative City. Yeah, I put it on there. I'm, I'm yeah. smart like that. And just scroll through, scroll through some of the things that we've posted recently. Watch our most recent uh, this week in art video. But yeah, we partner with the Orlando Philharmonic, the the Orlando Ballet, the Dr. Phillips Center. We have collaborating partners that are our, our large institutions, and they are crucial and essential for um, for the, the thriving arts community that we want to develop. But we also work, there's, you know, one of my favorite artists in town, he, he's 20 years old, his name is Halsey, he's a visual artist, and not only is he a, a really great visual artist, he also is doing a lot of work when it comes to event producing. So he's net right now working on a, a music and live art event at the Hanau Center up on Edgewater Drive. It'll happen on April 21st. It's a Saturday. And he'll gather probably 800 to 1,000 people to come together, hear bands, see this art, and have a really amazing time. And I think, for me, the cultural barometer isn't the Dr. Phillips Center, although I'm really grateful for the Dr. Phillips Absolutely. Center. Absolutely. The cultural barometer and the artistic barometer is emerging artists, and, and once we have created and established an artistic community in Central Florida where emerging artists can start, sustain, and grow their career, then I think we have a sustainable arts community. Agreed. Agreed. So can I back up really quick? The Hanau Center on okay. Edgewater. Yep. All right. So I live about five seconds from there, and I have no idea where that is. So that should tell you yeah. I'm still involved, and I don't know yeah. what that is or where that even exists mm -hmm. or why it exists. So just for an example, give them an idea. What is that? Where on Edgewater is that? And are there other art things, art things or performances that go on there? Yeah, it's uh, it's north of Fairbanks. They have programming there at least every week, maybe sometimes a couple times a week. They have visual art shows. They host concerts. 
Um, it's uh, you walk in and there's the initial building and then there's kind of an outdoor space and they have some ship shipping containers out there and they have a big grass lot in the back and it's north of Fairbanks um, on the east side of, of Edgewater Drive and they're doing some really interesting programming. I love that. So that's something I didn't even know. It's right in my backyard and that's why it's so important to have a conduit, some place where we can all go to look this stuff up to if we're interested at all, which a lot of people are saying, I want to be involved, I want to be involved, um, to find the information because there, you, you hear about the major things a lot of times. You hear about um, Florida Film Festival was here, Orlando Film Festival was yeah. here, Dan Springen does a great job up the street, um, but there are so many other things that go on and I think a lot of people don't know where to go for them. So what well, do you think? Come to us. Come to come Creative, to Creative City, City Project. Project. Come to our social and we'll keep you connected. That's correct. All right, so what do you think some of the things are that we could still use in our city? Um, what are some of the programs that you see? What are some of the things that we could support better as a community? Um, well, I think those are all different questions. I think, hello, <laughs> I never said I was, I'm not Oprah. <laughs> I don't really know how to plan this out. It's so just, one of the things I'm really <laughs> passionate about uh, is from an arts perspective in particular is um, we've done not a great job, and this isn't just the arts community. I think it's the business community. I think it's downtown Orlando. I think it's um, out. Anyway, I think there's a lot of players part of this conversation, but one of the things we have not done a good job with since the 90s is figuring out how to leverage the 68 million guests that we have in our city every year. And uh, so, you know, as we develop what Creative City Project is, as we get our annual arts event immersed kind of on its way and thriving and growing, one of the, one of the personal initiatives that I would love to engage in is coalescing our arts community and our business community to ask how can we get 1% of 68 million people to become a ticket buying patron of one of our arts organizations while they're in Central Florida. I love that. And the moment we have 680,000 additional ticket buyers coming to our arts events, right. we're having totally different conversations That's true. That's true. about our arts community. That's so, true. So I think that's because, one of the things I'm passionate because the about. world still thinks of us mostly as the mouse. Right? Which is fine. I have, I'm Which a annual pass holder. I understand. Me too. I yeah. love, I love <laughs> yeah. Epcot. Epcot's my favorite. I can't, yeah, I know you can't. I'm an animal mine. kingdom guy. Oh, see, they, they also have bars, so I'm, I'm good there. <laughs> uh, but I think you're right. I think people come here and then they, that's all they think of mm -hmm. in Orlando. They think theme parks and that's what drives so much yeah. of it. But you're right. If we could figure out a way, I love that capitalize on or capture mm -hmm. more of those people to bring them more into the city and not make it so West Orlando. Is that West Orlando? Yeah. Okay, good. I, I'm terrible at North South, East. Southwest. Yeah. Southwest. Yeah. Uh, make it more where you come in and you experience more of Orlando because there is more to it yeah. than what just the mouse and Universal and all the parks offer. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think that's actually awesome. So how do people get involved? Um, so if they go and they click on the link and they go, oh, this is so cool, Cole, I, I want to get involved. Do you have volunteer opportunities? Do you have events that are uh, sponsored by or highlighted by or spotlighted by Creative Art, a Creative City Project? Uh -huh. uh, tell them more. Yeah, so there's a few different ways to get involved. First of all, um, go to our Facebook page, like what we're doing. Go to our Instagram account, like what we're doing. Follow what we're doing. And honestly, it's, it's huge not just for us as an organization, it's huge for the organizations we're supporting. If you share those This Week in Art videos, like zero skin off your back, right. but a huge boost to our artistic community. Right. If we could get 50 people even sharing that video once right. a week, it exponentially increases the engagement that those arts organizations have and the things that people start to know about that are happening in arts community. So low buy-in, Follow us on social media <laughs> and, I yeah, love it. And, and share our content because that content isn't like just promotional content for us. It's value con valuable content for you right. and hopefully the friends that you connect with on social media. Second thing is um, attend our event. So October 19th and 20th, 2018, Immerse 2018, more than a thousand artists creating unexpected arts encounters in the streets and public spaces of downtown Orlando. Again value add to you like it's something that we're bringing all these arts organizations together to uh to hopefully give you the time of your life and um 
So come, just come join us. Come like join them. My, res my response to how can we help you is be part of what we're doing. Correct. And, um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll have hundreds of free performances that will be happening in the streets and public spaces of downtown Orlando, literally hundreds. Um, and then we'll have some paid experiences. And those awesome. paid experiences help us continue to build our event and help us make this most of 99% of the event free to the general public. So we'll have you know four course dinner in partnership with the Dinner Party Project in the middle of Orange oh, Avenue with some special exclusive performances. If you can buy a $150 ticket to join us for a four course dinner, do it because it's not just an amazing time for you. Right. It helps us do what, what it is we're doing. Correct. So my response is how can you help <laughs> us treat yourself when it comes to our event this coming wow, October. That's so awesome. I love it. No, listen, I ask the questions. Yeah. You never know what the answer is going to be. Yeah. What if somebody wants to volunteer and help? Because it's March and the event's in October. Yeah. Do have volunteer opportunities? Yeah, so we have, um, you know. Can people get involved on a committee? Can they call you and say, hey, I'd like to help Cole. How do I help? Other yeah. than buy the ticket. But if they want to get involved, too, in the middle, are there other things that they can do to help you with the, the semantics of getting that all done. Yeah, the biggest uh, volunteer opportunity we have is during our event. So we'll have lots of shifts. We'd love, you know, one of the things that we're secretly planning on right well, now it's a is, uh, is a hundred foot ball pit down the middle of Orange Avenue. No way. So we're gonna staff that for dozens of hours over the course of two days and we'll need shifts of people who will come and smile at kids and families and everybody oh, it's who for will kids. come. I thought it was for adults. It's for everybody. Okay. <laughs> No, for sure, 100%. You're getting it. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? We should totally live tape well, that. Yeah, we'll do a I live never, broadcast I mean, from I, the ball I mean, I got, we, <laughs> we should totally do a live. Yeah. That's crazy. We That's actually will. awesome, though. So those are the creative things that Cole and the group are trying to bring to Orlando. Yeah. And we need it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's so good. And I feel like we're the spirit of the city really is engaging in it and really supportive of it. Yeah. Uh, more so than ever. I feel like we really have the people in place who are like, you know what, Cole, you should do all those things. Yeah. Um, and you have obviously an audience who's watching this like, I want to know, I want to be involved. Yeah. People really are hungry for that. Well, let me talk to you in the response to this question of people who may own a company or may be a VP of marketing or something at, at so many of the great companies we have here. And we have a lot of wonderful partners like the Orlando Magic, uh, like the Downtown Arts District, like... Uh, like OUC, Fairwinds, all of these people have come alongside us and, and supported. Um, but one of the things that we love doing isn't having somebody give us money and we slap their logo on something, although we do do that. What we're looking at doing is asking the question, okay, you as a company, what is your story and how can we tell that story in an art-centric way that adds value to your company through an art-centric engagement at our event, but also adds value to our audience. Sure. And so when a company comes to us and they say, we value this. We say, all right, how can we create an interactive art-centric experience around that piece of your story and engage new audiences with your brand story in a way that's irresistible? And so you, what you'll never see at our event is 10 by 10 tents of companies like trying to hand you their magnet. Yeah. Everything that we're doing is saying, <laughs> all right, what's your story? What do you want to tell about your story? And how can we create an artistic expression of that story that will add value to our audience? Love that. So if you own a company, if you're the vice president of marketing at Company X, get with me because let's talk about how we can build something super awesome that not only is an amazing experience for the 40,000 people who show up to our event, but also is something that we can capture and then just blast all over the digital world. You're thinking creatively. Obviously, he's part of the Creative <laughs> City Project. Come on. We wanted to talk about creativity today. Yeah. All right. So... Uh, we're going to share. Thank you, Kimber, for sharing our link. Yes, there's a lot of people on here, and of course, Cole has been talking, which is what I want him to do, and not focus on all of your comments. So he'll reach out to you once we share the video. I promise. Uh, he's really good about that. Uh, so we're going to share all of the contact information, the information I already shared the link, but we'll share it again. Uh, Cole's going to share it, and then you guys can reach out to him, get involved. Buy the tickets, but more importantly, reach out so that you know what's going on. Click on the link so that you're aware and so that you can really become um, involved in what's happening in our city. Right. So any parting words of wisdom for them? All right, yes. here we go. Pull out your phone, go to your calendar app, <laughs> scroll to October, here it click is. on October 19th, <laughs> and put in Immerse 2018, October 19th and 20th, 2018, more than a thousand artists in the streets and public spaces of downtown amazing. Orlando. Join us.
So anything else you want to leave them with before we go? Obviously we've plugged as we should because it's an experience. I am not going to miss it this year. I promise. And pull I definitely out your want to phone. be. Well, out, <laughs> I'm my giving, phone's right oh, there. But, phone's there. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I want to participate in the dinner on the drive. Kind Can't of, wait to have I mean, you. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so anything you want to leave them with about the arts, how to get involved, any parting words of wisdom for the people who are watching? We'll go back to what we, this thing we talked about early on. Right now, the Orlando Indie Comedy Festival is going on. And, uh, and I think this is the call to action for all of us is get out and do stuff. So that festival in particular runs through Sunday night. Uh, if you want to go see some comedy, go find Orlando Indie Comedy Festival right here on Facebook and buy a ticket. The, uh, the Timakua Arts White House has events going on all the time. I was there last Saturday. Amazing Cuban pianist and bass player and drummer. Amazing show. There were empty seats in that place. Yeah. And it was a free to $10 donation concert. <laughs> and to me, it was like, this is so amazing. I mean, this is like a, a world-class musician right. playing right here in our city. We don't and know. there's empty seats. We don't, we don't know. So now we have a place to go to understand all of this. Yeah. I don't even know where that house is. What does that tell you when I'm involved? What? You I... Wait, you've never been? Oh no! It's a fair, but listen, I'm I'm not afraid to be vulnerable and authentic Thank you. right here Thank you. Uh, because I don't know, and this is the stuff. So if I don't okay, know, then I'm going to tell you the story. Now tell me, Benoit Glazer, who was the music director of La Nuba, Cirque du Soleil's La Nuba, out of downtown Disney, until about five years ago, he was the music director of the show, and uh, he was hosting concerts of jazz musicians from around the world in his backyard at his house on Summerlin Avenue, across from the football field at Boone High School. Eventually, he said, well, we can't keep having these concerts in my backyard or my neighbors are going to kill me. <laughs> they bulldozed their house, no. rebuilt a house with a three-story music venue inside their house. No and more than once a week, they host musicians from around the world, and most of their concerts are free. Oh, my gosh. They open no, their did home to the residents and visitors I to Central Florida. really, Florida. really out of touch on that. So it's on Summerlin. Summerlin, south of downtown. That's amazing. So is that, so can somebody, once they've heard it, they don't, probably don't know how to spell it. T-I-M-U-C-U-A, so, Timakua. No, see, he knows how. He, he pronounces it. If correctly. you've gone to our Facebook page by clicking the link above, scroll down. I just did a live broadcast in the last few days with Benoit talking about the arts house, the arts, Timakua White House and the, some of the events. Look at all up. of this stuff that we have, an opportunity to go to and experience in our yes. city and that's what's awesome about what you do so you're Thank you're you. you're a dream i appreciate you so <laughs> much for coming on i know it's kind of like god the ted show do i really want to go on there uh but I, you have such an important I did, message i never said that. i know you did i'm Stop joking projecting. with you i'm not projecting oh my god i'm gonna get it analyzed uh -huh. today I need projecting to. is insecurities thinking <laughs> people don't want to come on your no, show people love me are you kidding oh, i'm just okay. pretending uh, for my kids um so no, I really appreciate you coming on. I think what you're doing is love just it. so powerful and impactful for our city. It's so you. important. Um, we love you guys. Thanks for all the comments. You got, they were really active and involved. Uh, we're going to post all of Cole's contact information, all of the information about Creative City Project. Yes, that. Um, yes, that too. I won't give out Cole's personal <laughs> cell phone number. Um, I've done that before, and I've gotten a lot of flack. Uh, but you've been awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Thanks for tuning in and keeping with love us. It. Uh, we're right on schedule. See, we did it. You did it. You're awesome. Love you guys. Bye. We'll see you soon. All right, now I'm supposed to do this. I was told, Mwah. see, hit it.